Though we're still in the midst of the free agency frenzy that took hold this week, the Dallas Cowboys are continuing the grind toward the end of April as they look forward to the most important aspect of roster building for their franchise, the NFL Draft. As we know by now, the Dallas Cowboys prefer to build their team through draft, supplement their roster with lower-cost free agent signings, and retain their own players through contract extensions and resignings. As they get ready for the draft, they'll be exploring all opportunities to improve a roster that made it to the divisional round of the NFL playoffs in 2018 with the hopes of advancing even further in 2019. This is the first installment of Mock Drafts that you'll see from me here at Inside the Star, and like last year, I wanted to explore what some trade options might look like for the Dallas Cowboys. For this installment, I used DraftTech's big board over with Fanspeaks on the Clock Premium Simulator. It allows for trades and allows you to select whether the simulation will use the same big board or multiple big boards to create more variables. I selected multiple, because that's closer to the reality of the NFL Draft. Every team has a unique big board that they're operating from. All trades went through DraftX trade value chart, which is what the teams use when assigning value to draft picks. 58 trade 58 to San Francisco for 67 and 86 because the Cowboys don't have a first round pick or a sixth round pick and this draft class is deep at several positions where the Cowboys could use some reinforcements, they're going into the draft looking to trade back with their first pick. The San Francisco 49ers come calling and offer pick 67, 3.3, and 86, 4.2, for the 58th overall pick. the trade value chart produced by DraftTech, the Cowboys gain 21 points in value from the trade. It's not a far trade back, as it's only 9 spots. Their ability to pick up an extra fourth is huge. 67. Christian Miller, Edge, Alabama With their first pick of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Christian Miller, Edge, Alabama. Somewhat of a forgotten man on the Alabama defense, Miller exploded for 8 sacks and 11 tackles for loss in his senior season with the Crimson Tide. Randy Gregory facing an indefinite suspension, the Cowboys could use some help on the opposite side of Demarcus Lawrence that can provide pressure. Check out the Draft Network scouting report on Christian Miller. 90 Charles Omenahu, DL, Texas Admittedly, I'm not as high on Charles Omenahu as some others might be as a second-round selection, but as a third-rounder, I can see the value in drafting Omenahu to help fortify your defensive line. The Texas Longhorn product has experience playing on the edge, 3-tech, and 1-tech alignments, and would probably be best suited playing 3-tech in the NFL. He reminds me a bit of Tyrone Crawford in that he doesn't do anything spectacular, but he finds ways to make plays. He was a productive player at Texas finishing with 9.5 sacks in the season. Back in February I wrote a film review on Omenahu. 104 trade 104 to the Buffalo Bills for 112 and 131 in another trade back, the Cowboys sent pick 104 in the fourth round to the Buffalo Bills for their two fourth round picks, 112 and 131. Per the trade value chart, the Cowboys picked up 25 points in pick value by trading back 8 spots. 112 Jonathan Abram, South Mississippi Street. The Dallas Cowboys could use a safety that can play in the box and Jonathan Abram from Mississippi Street. Could very well be the guy to line up next to Xavier Woods in the secondary. In 2018, Abram recorded 99 total tackles, 9 tackles for loss, 3 sacks, 5 passes defenses, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and 2 interceptions. In 2017, he recorded 71 total tackles, diver tackles for loss, 2 sacks, 2 forced fumbles and 5 passes defensed. Abram, who will be one of the Dallas Cowboys' 30 visitors in preparation for the draft, was a splash player in the SEC. 128 Rodney Anderson, RB, Oklahoma Were it not for the ACL injury suffered by Oklahoma running back Rodney Anderson, it's possible we're talking about a top 60 selection in this year's draft. Anderson's injury history, however, has him consistently available for the Cowboys in the fourth round. 
as they look for a backup to Ezekiel Elliott, the Cowboys would be hard-pressed to find a runner as productive and as talented as Anderson is without paying a premium price. Like Elliott, Anderson's a smooth runner, who is able to play through contact as well as make people miss in the open field. For his career, Anderson averaged 6.4 yards per carry and scored 16 touchdowns only full season with the Sooners, he rushed for 1,161 yards on 188 attempts, 6.2 yards per carry, 13 touchdowns, and caught 17 passes for 281 yards, and 5 more touchdowns. That's a touchdown every 11.4 touches. Prior to being lost for the season in Week 2 against UCLA, Anderson was averaging 10.8 yards per carry. Read Brian Martin's draft preview on Rodney Anderson. 131 Paris Campbell, W.R., Ohio State Paris Campbell has the speed, quickness, and athleticism to be a threat both in the slot and on the outside for the Dallas Cowboys. Admittedly, it's not likely that a player with his athletic traits and production would be available in the fourth round, but in the NFL draft, there are few guarantees. Campbell recorded 90 receptions for 1,063 yards, and 23 touchdowns in his senior season with the Buckeyes. He'd be an excellent asset in the slot and on the outside as a speed threat for the Dallas Cowboys. 136 Ben Bano Goo, Edge, LB, TCU You can never have too many pass rushers, and that's what the Cowboys believe as they double up on weak side edge players by selecting Ben Bano Goo from TCU in the fourth round. Bano, who was a very productive player for the Hearn Frogs. For his junior and senior seasons, Bano, who averaged 8.5 sacks and 17.25 tackles for loss. At 6-4, 249, he brings good length to the position and has the frame to add a bit more bulk to help him set the edge in the NFL. 165 Caleb Wilson, Tay, UCLA count me as one who's excited about the possibility of Blake Jarwin developing into a starting tight end for the Cowboys. He certainly showed over the last half of the season that he's capable, just needs more experience and playing time. That said, despite the addition of Jason Witten, the Cowboys should still look to add a tight end in the draft, and here's a good one in UCLA product, Caleb Wilson. In 11 games for the Bruins in 2918, Wilson caught 60 passes for 965 yards and 4 touchdowns. He averaged 16.1 yards per reception in the Pac-12. If there's a knock on Wilson, it's that he has had some injury struggles in his collegiate career. He has potential to be a move tight end in the NFL with his receiving ability. 241 Jalen Hurd, W.R. Baylor There are few prospects that can be had around the fifth round or later that are as intriguing at Baylor wide receiver Jalen Hurd. The first three years of his collegiate career, Hurd played running back for the University of Tennessee and averaged about 4.6 yards per carry. In his freshman season, he ran for 899 yards and five touchdowns, while adding 221 yards receiving on 35 catches and two more touchdowns. When he transferred to Baylor for his senior season, the Bears coaching staff converted him to wide receiver and he flourished. In 12 games, Hurd caught 69 passes for 946 yards and 4 touchdowns. The Bears also used him as a runner and he gained 209 yards on 48 carries for 3 more touchdowns. In his four-year career, he averaged 1,070 yards from scrimmage on 193 touches for 8.25 touchdowns. That's at two different positions in two different schools. At 6-4, 217 pounds, Hurd has the size to play receiver in the NFL. He has the ability to play both inside and outside and can give you some snaps out of the backfield as well. Check out Brian Martin's film review on Jalen Hurd. This is just one of many scenarios that could take place when the NFL draft rolls around at the end of April. The possibilities are endless. The Cowboys have several needs on the offensive and defensive side of the football and this draft has players that can fill those areas of need throughout.
Obviously, they'll look to draft the best player available when they come on the clock, and these could very well be players that end up with a star on their helmet in 2019. How would you feel about the Cowboys drafting any of these guys? Hidden among another deep receiver class, Khalil Lewis from Cincinnati is one who hasn't gotten much attention. The 6 feet, 0 inches, 200 pound receiver was among his conference's best but wasn't recognized as such. In his four years with the Bearcats, he caught 168 passes for 2,116 yards and 21 touchdowns. Lewis improved his numbers each season, he played and helped lead the team to an 11-2 record and a military bowl victory over Virginia Tech. Lewis won't get as much attention as many of the receivers in this class but that doesn't appear to be stopping him, speaking with him, he's clearly ready and motivated for the next level. All he needs is to get one look and someone will see what I saw on TV and his game film. Me, to get ready for the draft, many prospects will get their body right. They work out harder, become strict with their diets, and some even will go in-depth with their coaches on game film to see what areas they think they need to fix for the next level. How have you been preparing for the NFL? What's been the biggest struggle? Lewis, I have been watching a lot of film and learning more about the game of football in my off time now that I don't have schoolwork. I work out and have a meal plan and only one cheat meal day a week which is Saturday for me. I barely want to cheat my diet now though because now I see how your diet can improve your performance and how you feel, recover, etc. There isn't a lot of struggle for me in this process because I love to grind and that's exactly what it is. Me, at Cincinnati you played both the slot and outside receiver positions, running routes across the middle and down the seams. But where do you think you would fit best? Lewis, I like playing both and I was fine wherever the coaches needed me, but I love the outside. I love beating press coverage. Me, I was just about to get to that. To me, watching your film, your ability to run crisp routes and create separation has been maybe your biggest strength. What do you think your best attribute is? Lewis, I think me being smart helps me overall. Nothing physical or what I do specifically is that much better than the other, like roots, catching, stuff like that. I just study the game and it helps me execute. Me, what kind of receiver do you try to model your game after? Lewis, I don't think I model my game after anyone. I want to be Khalil Lewis and be the best I can be, but I watch tons of receivers, even when a game is on, I just watch the receivers and DBs, but if I had to name a few Stedman Bailey, Stevie Johnson and Odell. Me, every season you played at Cincinnati, you finished the year with better numbers than the previous one. You were catching more passes, scoring more and became your team's best weapon on offense. How did you develop yourself every season, and do you think that process will translate to the NFL? Lewis, I think I am getting better every day. I try to improve on something every chance I get but like I said previously, the mind is powerful. I stopped working as hard physically, but I still was getting it in. Not to get confused but like I said, I got smarter. I couldn't kill my body because I was getting older. I had to take care of myself, so me getting smarter, the game slowed down for me and got easier. Me, a lot of players get motivation from either a loved one, or trauma, or wherever. It's what fuels them to be great or even greater than they thought possible. Where does your motivation come from? Lewis, my motivation really comes from my mom. That's why I work hard in whatever I do, on and off the field, and it never seems like I do enough because she worked two to three jobs all my life and I really hate seeing her tired with a passion, but I don't let it out. I put that energy into being successful for her. Me, that's Honorable's last question. As of right now, you're a projected day three prospect. Why should teams take a chance on you, and what can you give them to offer? Lewis, I love the game, I love to compete, I'm a team guy and I love to win. Whatever I have to do for the team's success, I'm doing it with no hesitation. Outside of being a receiver, I can do multiple things on specials teams as well. 
Me, thank you for your time. Good luck with the next few months and on your career as well. Khalil Lewis has a lot to prove but it doesn't appear to phase him. He's motivated and looks ready for the challenge. Some smart GM will find this smart young man and make a very smart move. Name, Riley Ridley Position, Wide Receiver School, Georgia Conference, SEC Class, Junior Jersey, No. 8 Recruitment Rating, 4 Star HT, 6 Feet 2 Inches WT, 200 DOB, July 21st, 1996 Receiving 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 Rushing 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 Scrimmage 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 Year School CONF Class Pos G Rec Yards AVGTD at Yards AVGTD Plays Yards AVGTD Asterisk 2016 Georgia SEC FRWR 6 1 2 2 3 8 19 point 8 2 3 4 1 13 point 7 0 1 5 2 7 9 18 .62 asterisk 2017 Georgia SEC so WR8142185.6215.0 15 15 15.2 Georgia SEC Junior WR144355913.09004355913.09 .09 career Georgia 691015 14.71344611.50731061 14.513 highlights I do not own any of the content in this video Follow me on social media, Twitter, https colon slash slash twitter.com slash hprock insta, https colon slash slash www.instagram.com slash harrison proc twitch, https colon slash slash www.twitch.tv slash dom squad 100 pros, Riley Ridley has the traits and skill set to be a X receiver in the NFL, but because of his lack of top end speed he projects better as a C or big slot. What he may lack in speed, he more than makes up in technique and versatility. He has a prototypical size and strength to be a no. 1 WR in the NFL, but is probably best suited to be a position type receiver. Shows an alpha attitude when the ball is thrown his direction on film. He doesn't wait for the ball to reach him, he goes and attacks it, plucking it out of the air with his strong natural hands. High points the ball in contested catch situations. Possesses outstanding body control to bend and contort to passes thrown outside his frame. Also has outstanding spatial awareness both along the sideline and when defenders are around him. Runs all routes at full speed and shows the ability to sink his hips to get in and out of his breaks with ease. Solid technique, footwork, and hand fighting ability to beat press coverage. Doesn't have the best separation ability, but understands spacing and how to temper his roots to create favorable throwing windows. Has adequate speed, but isn't considered a burner by any means. Strength, size, and competitive toughness makes him a threat after the catch. Plus blocker in the passing game. Funds, Georgia's heavy run-based defense didn't provide Riley Ridley with a lot of opportunities to showcase what he can do in the passing game. Because of this, there are concerns about his productivity and how his skill set translates to the NFL. Also ran a limited number of routes at Georgia. Needs to develop a more diverse route tree. Lack of top-end speed will likely keep him from becoming a team's number one receiver, instead he may be regulated to nothing more than a possession WR. Doesn't show a lot of separation ability on film. Can create yards after the catch due to his strength and size, but shouldn't be considered a home run threat. Needs to become more consistent at beating press coverage. Ridley isn't going to provide much value on special teams. Never returned a kick or punt during his three years at Georgia. Tested like an average to below average receiver at the NFL Combine. was arrested in 2017 for marijuana possession. Cowboys fit in Riley Ridley, the Dallas Cowboys would be getting a versatile wide receiver who is capable of playing the X, C, or in the slot in the NFL. With the X position already locked down by Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup locked in as the Z receiver, Ridley could replace Cole Beasley and be the big slot. WR that is becoming more prominent in the league. 
think Juju Smith-Schuster with the Pittsburgh Steelers, who I believe Ridley compares favorably to. Coming from a heavy run-based offense, Ridley would fit right in with what the Cowboys ask from their WRs. He possesses the size and strength to be a difference maker as a blocker, which we all know is highly valued in Dallas. He unfortunately doesn't bring much to the table on special teams. Offensive coordinator Kellen Moore could really get creative as to how he deploys the Cowboys receivers in the passing game because of the versatility all of them have to play each WR position. Cooper, Gallup, and Ridley are all capable of playing on the outside or out of the slot, which really puts defenders at a disadvantage. Opposing defenses wouldn't be able to predetermine root concepts, which would put them on their heels from the get-go. -go. AP Photo, Brody Schmidt, File, Name, Justice Hill Position, Running Back School, Oklahoma State Conference, Big 12 Class, Junior Jersey, No. 5 Recruitment Rating, 3 Star HT, 5 Feet 10 Inches WT, 198 DOB, in November 14, 1997, Highlights, Oklahoma State RB Justice Hill's Highlights from the 2018 football season. Hill rushed for 930 yards and 9 touchdowns this year. Check out his full season highlights with the Cowboys in 2018. Justice Hill has three years of production and consistency as the primary running back at Oklahoma State, but probably projects better as a change of pace back in the NFL. He is an electric playmaker anytime he has the ball in his hands and was surprisingly durable throughout his college career for ORB his size. Hill possesses good vision, allowing his blocks to set up before he makes his cuts. Shows a strong cutback ability. Possesses light nimble feet and a jump cut that helps him sidestep defenders. Is elusive in the open field with enough wiggle to make would-be tacklers miss in one-on-one -on -one situations. Shows good burst and speed to pick up chunk yardage. Good contact balance. Solid in pass protection, but needs to clean up his technique. Despite not being utilized in the passing game in college, he has the skill set to be more of a factor as a receiver out of the backfield in the NFL. Good, but not great route runner. Needs to become more consistent at the catch point. Speed, elusiveness, and vision could help him become a factor in the return game even though he wasn't asked to do it in college. Ons, the biggest negative about Justice Hill is obviously his lack of size. This will likely limit him to nothing more than a change of pace running back in the NFL. His small stature also creates durability concerns, especially when you take in consideration his upright running style. Unfortunately, his slight frame may already be maxed out. Hill wasn't used much in the passing game at Oklahoma State, only 49 career catches. When he had the opportunity, he didn't show the softest hands on tape, but was good enough to get the job done. The willingness is there in pass protection and is a chip blocker, but once again his size limits his effectiveness. Also needs to clean up his technique in pass pro. Will more than likely be a non-factor in short yardage situations. Just doesn't have the strength or power to get the job done. Needs to learn to take what's there in the running game instead of always looking for the home run. Tries to bounce his runs outside too often. There are questions about whether he can contribute in the return game. Has the speed and elusiveness to be a return man, but wasn't asked to do it in college. Cowboys fit If the Dallas Cowboys are looking for a running back who can bring a little something different to the table than Ezekiel Elliott, former Oklahoma State RB Justice Hill could be their guy. There is a lot to like about the skill set Hill would bring to the Cowboys offense. He is an electric RB with home run ability any time he touches the ball. He could be the perfect complement to Zeke's running style. As exciting as Hill's college tape is, he is probably nothing more than a change of pace back in the NFL, and would serve in capacity with the Cowboys. There are several areas of his game he still needs to improve upon, but as a rookie he would likely step in and be their third down back. 
He didn't do it in college but his speed and elusiveness could make him a factor in the return game as a kicker-punt returner. If the Cowboys like his game, they will probably have to use one of their two fourth-round draft picks to secure his services.